Hi, it's Ed Butowski. So I thought I would share with you what makes us different than all the other investment advisors out there. And I mean, very, very different. So the first thing is when I got into the business, there wasn't an objective way to evaluate a financial advisor. Uh, there were a lot of you know people who would refer you to us you know, from a CPA or an estate attorney or a friend of a friend. But I wanted there to be a very clear way to evaluate us. So I came up with these eight metrics. First thing is you want to look at the rate of return that you need to make in order to not lose purchasing power after subtracting your expenses, taxes, and cost of living increase. Then the term standard deviation, again, a kind of a wonky term, but it's the most important statistic when it comes to asset management. And your standard deviation needs to be 80% or less than your historical rate of return. And so when you're thinking about standard deviation, think about it, that as risk. And the higher the risk, the greater the volatility is on the portfolio. So I created this other term called variance drag phantom tax. And variance drag phantom tax is simply that equation. What is your standard deviation in relationship to your rate of return? Anything over one and a half is not acceptable. And we'll get back to that in a moment because I'm going to show you a couple of examples. Sharp ratio, you want this to be one or higher. Uh, William Sharp won a Nobel Prize in 1990, and anything under 0.5 is not acceptable. Then you also want to know what the probability of any loss is in the next 12 months. Everybody should know what the probability of any loss is, and you're going to find out in a second that a typical retail investment portfolio, the probability of a loss is normally greater than 25%. You want that to be 15% or less. Then you want to know what the amount of money at risk is. Again, these are metrics that are very important. You want to know how much money, based on historical data, is at risk. Then your upper and lower return. You want this to be as narrow as possible, and I'll go through that in a moment uh, as I build a portfolio for you. But you want this to, again, be as narrow as possible. So if you had a historical rate of return of 10, you would want to be able to say that you have just as good a chance of making 22% in the next 12 months as you do losing 2%. Sadly, most investment portfolios you're going to find have historical rates of returns of 10 and standard deviations of 15 or greater, which means that you have just as good a chance of making 40% in the next 12 months as you do losing 20% portfolios. So we go to this thing called Portfolio Builder. And we can toggle this and then it becomes a portfolio analysis. So I'm going to put in here a sample and I'll put in $3 million. But again, you know, whatever the number you have, you have. Then a typical retail investment portfolio looks like this. This is the kind of stuff that, you know, investment advisors might put you in. ahead and put some in the international markets because this is what retail investment portfolios normally look like and now we're gonna see what the benefit of this collection of investments is and you'll see here that this portfolio which is very typical has historically returned 7.7 percent with a standard deviation of 12.58 but all you have to look at is the variance drag phantom tax. And if it's above one and a half, you're taking way too much risk and it should be 0.8 or lower. Sharp ratio should be one or higher. This is 0.53. And the probability of any loss in the next 12 months on this portfolio is 27%. And the amount of money at risk is 645,000. But here's a key. You have just as good a chance of making 32.8% in the next 12 months as you do losing 17%. So what kind of planning can you do with such a, a diversion, you know, between 33% and 17%? That's absolutely no way that you can plan for the future, you know, expenses and saving and so on. 
uh, this is just not a very good portfolio. This is an optimization tool that we created and it allows you to put in here what kind of rate of return historically you want to have and what kind of standard deviation you want to have. And it's now building this. Now, this is all historical data. It's not predictive. However, if you believe the next 13 years or next number of years is going to be similar to the previous 13 years, because that's how far back this data goes, then this could be uh, you know, a forecasting tool. However, things change all the time with business cycles. But as it's building out, you're going to see here a 12% rate of return, standard deviation of 5, variance drag phantom tax went from 1.63 to 0.42, and you want it to be 0.8 or lower. The sharp ratio went from 0.53 to 2.2, and the probability of any loss in the next 12 months went from 27% down below 1%. And the amount of money at risk went from 600,000 plus to 11,000. And you have just as good a chance of making 22% as you do making 2% in the next 12 months. This separates us from everybody else. I don't care if it's Goldman, Morgan, UBS, Merrill Lynch. This is how you should approach investment management. And I would love to have a conversation with you uh, about this. Thanks.